Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, live the life we love. It's Friday, so it's my PowerPoint day, so let's get right into it. This is called The Elephant Trainer, and I hope that any one of these slides gives you a one-liner that's like free therapy and it helps you move, move you along your, your path. All right, so here we go. First thing, don't make friends with an elephant trainer if you don't have enough room in your house for an elephant. This is not a spectator sport. As soon as you start to change your consciousness, there's going to be a macro shift in your life, a paradigm shift, new values. And you got to deal with the, uh, initially it's chaos, but eventually it's order and peace. All right, so from here, what do we say? Oh, and we got a nice little photo of, oh, Osho Rajneesh. A really spiritual person will live life as an art and will create a deep harmony between the body and the consciousness. And this is the greatest art there is. Life will be a joy to see, and you'll be fragrant for the sheer reason that there's no split in your being. The very unity makes you organic, and the wound of division is healed. Consciousness itself is the wound. Like in the Bible, you know, how did they know that they were naked in the garden? Who told them? Consciousness makes you aware. It forces you to pay attention or you numb yourself in order not to feel, which is the cause of all addiction. Then your denial becomes causal. You're avoiding everything becomes the basis for which you reason and make choices. And that means you're coming out of ignorance and aggression instead of out of calmness and clarity. All right. So when you practice, remember my metaphor is yoga, but it could be any form whatsoever. You expect to take your skills to another level. That's what practice does. It refines and deepens your understanding of the form you're working with. Now, yoga wants you to have an integrated or a balanced way of approach. I call it the university, the gym, and the temple all at once. The university is the part of you that has curious investigation. You want to find out. You want to know. You want to use the powers of your mind and intellect. The gym or the yoga mat or the yoga do the dojo, this is the place where you test your metal. You use your physical prowess to develop certain kinds of skills that have to do with kinesthetic awareness. And it hones your action, gives you great skill sets to do things off the mat, not just on the mat. And then, of course, the temple is the part of you that has a devotional leaning. There's a yearning, a beckoning from beyond to go back to our cosmic home. We want to find that transcendental hint of mint. Uh, and we want to understand when people ask, is God supernatural? Sure, God is super and God is natural. You have to figure that out. But you do it by blending all of these things. So where's your university of study? Where's your gym of, of physical prowess? And where's your temple of opening your heart and surrendering to the divine? Now, as we say, for those practitioners who've had a fierce or intense practice, you're not dull. You're not average. You're not even keen. You're supremely enthusiastic. So what do we say? Hit the body hard enough and the head will die. Mm -hmm. If you really push your anatomy, and push means persist until something happens, you're going to have a breakthrough experience of consciousness because where the body ends and the mind begins, nobody knows. And where the mind ends and the soul begins, nobody knows. But they're porous and one can bleed into the other. So work your body and see what that does to, to changing your consciousness. All right, now there are different ways of approaching what consciousness does. I call them lines of affiliation. What I call the inner king or queen, the inner ruler, that's the line of nurturance. You look out for the good of the realm. Your inner warrior uses its aggressive energy to go towards goals and protect the realm, keep chaos on the outside of the borders. Cognition has to do with the inner knower, the inner magician, the inner wise person within you. And an affiliation has to do with your lover the part of you that wants to make connections, that wants to have intimacy between yourself and other people because you're already interconnected, interwoven, and so you want to show that in your behavior. Hmm? But failed initiations happen also, that every one of these archetypal models has shadow sides that break down into active and passive polar opposites in how they express themselves. So if your inner ruler is not working for the good of the realm, you become bossy. And if your inner warrior is like a mercenary instead of finding the throne that's worthy to be loyal to, it becomes mean. If your inner knower, your inner wise person uses the information like for insider trading and personal advantage, you become detached and icy cold. And then if your lover is off kilter, 
you become promiscuous. You act out in ways that aren't healthy for you or for the people who you get involved in. Those are the failed initiations. We'd rather follow the lines of nurturance, positive aggression, cognition, and devotion through affiliation. Nonetheless, our job is to work with the stuff we're stuck with, and how do you evolve it? How do you evolve it? Well, according to John Bradshaw's four-fold model, first you do behavior modification, stop exactly whatever your addiction is and do something different. Run around the block, you know, to y do yoga, take a cold shower, right? But then you have to also do the original pain work. You have to go back into the thing where you felt like you lost something or some breach, moral breach happened in your life and now you carry the burden of that scar with you. You got to go back, see it, accept it, allow it to be, grieve the loss, work through it, and move on. And then cognitive corrective has to do with changing your mindset, choosing to put a different kind of um, spin on the whole thing. Tell yourself a better story like Life of Pi. And the most important is get an inner life. Find an anchor in your version of the spiritual world, the mythological world, so that you're not stuck with um, just the world on the material plane as if the ordinary state of consciousness was not only the only state of consciousness but uses its its uh, supposed supremacy to dismiss the altered states mm, reduce them to nothing and so you don't even realize or make the effort that there's other ways of looking at things besides the social consensus way and then if you do that you step up into the plate trouble is only opportunity and work close so instead of avoiding it that's when you're really going to use all the powers that you have to bring to bear on problem solving. And then, as Jesus said, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I'll give him never thirst again, because the water I give him will become a wellspring up to eternal life. That's the spiritual water. Like when he says, I have meat ye know not of. He ain't talking about food, is he? So the same thing. Is he talking about the spiritual thirst? Hmm? Otherwise, you live in the wasteland doing what everybody told you you're supposed to do, instead of regenerating yourself, revisioning yourself, and finding the deepest spiritual part of yourself that doesn't move along to the beat of the, of the uber culture. So ultimately, you know, your life is your path, solely there for the purpose of you expressing your spirit. And if you can't figure it out, it's because your life is also your cone, and you're not going to get it with your left brain. Have a great day today. Don't forget tomorrow I'm going out to the Catherine Leggy Lodge, 5901 um, South Country Road in uh, South County Line in Hinsdale. I'll be doing fairy tales from 2.30 to 3.30, but if you sign up, go to my website, gabrielhalpern.com. You can register there. They'll give you half price. Some other wonderful people doing uh, cacao ceremonies, sound healing, West African dance, Celtic music, and uh, followed by me hanging up, uh, doing up the, the elder thing. Otherwise, have a great day, and we'll see you next week.